Welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be diving back into Capture One. We're going to be talking about masking. And there's all kinds of things that you can do with the masks in Capture One. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. Now, this week, we're diving back into Capture One. We talked a little bit about masking when we did our layers video. So we had a full video on working with the layers within Capture One, how you can edit using those, which is really helpful. And I think it's actually one of my favorite features about Capture One as, a, as an editing program like this. But today we're gonna dive in a little bit deeper into this, specifically into the masking and some kind of neat little tricks that you can do with that. I've got a couple of photos that we're gonna use to demonstrate this. So let's dive in right now. So first things first, We've got this photo here. Our main subject is obviously the swan. I've done quite a bit of editing to the photo already to get it looking how I want to, how I want it to look. But let's say we want to brighten up the swan a little bit here. There's a few different ways that we can do that. So let's just dive in and get started with what we can do. Now, when we talk about masking, we're talking about using a layer with different effects on it. So that could be exposure, could be color, could be all kinds of things, even white balance. And then masking those adjustments into specific areas of the photo. Now there's a three different main ways that we can do that. We can do it with an adjustment brush where we are literally painting on where we want those adjustments to be. We can do it with the gradient mask, which is going to allow us to draw kind of a, like a, imagine a, a dark to clear gradient filter that you might put in front of your lens. It's a little bit like that, but with different effects. I'm going to go through all these. And then you've got the radial filter as well, which allows you to create kind of a circular mask over any area of your photo and then affect either the area inside that circle or outside. Now, don't worry, we're gonna go through all of those in much more detail than that. Let's start off with the adjustment brush. So first things first, let's come over here to the top left here. We're gonna click and we're gonna hold the plus icon underneath the layers and we're gonna select new empty adjustment layer. And this is gonna add a new adjustment layer, it's called it adjustment layer one. And we're gonna use the adjustment brush to actually draw a mask onto our photo. Now, what I want to actually do is brighten our swan here. So let's zoom in. I'm gonna do that just by using the scroll wheel on my mouse. And we're gonna actually draw the mask over this swan. So first things first, let's right click on the image. We can adjust the size here. We can adjust the hardness, the opacity and the flow. I like to keep the hardness a little bit lower. So at this point I've got it zero because I don't want to have a super hard edged mask here. I think it looks more natural to have it much more sort of soft, much more feathered. I'm going to keep the flow down around sort of 33. That works really well. That allows us to paint on this mask and then build it up. So when we first paint on, it's essentially painting on the mask at 33% opacity, but we can paint over that again to build it up. So I like using a slightly lower flow to build up our mask. And you can see under here, we've got a few other checkboxes as well. And the main one that we're going to be looking at right now is this auto mask feature. So if I tick that off for a second, I can left click and start drawing my mask on here. You can see I can't see anything there, but if I press M on my keyboard, it'll show off the mask in red. Now I can start painting that on and I can do probably quite a good job just by myself of keeping within where I want it to be, but I might go over and I can press Control Z to undo that. But an easier way of working, especially in a situation like this where we've got a very defined area that we want to paint this mask, I can right click, turn this auto mask function on. And what that's going to do you might have seen it added another circle to our little brush icon here. And essentially that inner circle is where it's going to be taking the source material. And as I then paint, if the outer parts of the circle don't match the inner parts of the circle, you might have seen there, it's going to actually snap onto what it finds as the edges. So it's gonna look for the edges here. If I go outside the lines a little bit, you can see it just corrects that for me. Now that's really handy when you're trying to do a much more refined specific mask. So in this situation where I'm trying to do the swan, it's much easier to do it with the auto mask feature on because it is going to just correct any small mistakes that I might make. Now it's still important to try and stick within the lines as much as possible. You know, if I do something like that, it's not going to do it for me. I still need to actually try my best, but, but it definitely, definitely helps 
with getting this right. So let's just mask this in. So with my swan mask now, let me zoom out so you can see, with my swan masked, we can go ahead and make some changes. Now you can see I didn't actually get all of the inside areas. I made managed to get all the edges, but I didn't get the inside area of the mask. Now, there's a couple of things we can do about that. In this situation, it's probably very easy to just go and paint that on ourselves. But if this was a larger area, as long as you painted the edges, you've got a kind of outline of the mask. You can just right click on the mask on the top left here and click fill mask. And as you can see, it just fills in those internal areas. And now if I press M to turn that mask off, we can do all kinds of things. We can brighten up just our swan here using the exposure or brightness. We can do things like increase the clarity, just our swan if that's something we want to do to kind of bring out some of that detail. And it kind of can help to, to make the swan much more of the focal point of the image, you know, make it the brightest area in the image. That's something I would use this for a lot, but you could certainly do things like paint onto a sky or paint anything really you want that you want to then be able to affect by itself. Now, another way we could have done this is we can use the radial mask as well. So let's turn this layer off by just checking the tick box there. And then let's make a new layer. So we're gonna come over here and we're gonna click the plus icon, we're gonna click and hold and go new empty adjustment layer. Now let's go over here to the draw radial gradient mask and we can pop that over our swan. Now you can draw it out like that and then just move it around as you like. And when I originally go to, to actually change some adjustments to make some adjustments to the photo, as you can see, it's actually adjusting everything outside of that circle and that can be really handy. There's a couple of things that we can actually do with this. We can darken the rest of the photo that's not around the swan. We could darken the rest of the photo uh, outside of the swan, or we can invert that to actually control the area inside the circle. So we can do that by just coming up to the layer, right click and invert mask. And that's going to allow us to now control the area inside the circle. So we could brighten it that way. So that's a really powerful way of controlling your photo using these radial masks. Because for example here, let's invert the mask again. Let's darken the photo around our swan here and we can then add another adjustment layer so let's left click and hold on the plus new empty adjustment layer let's draw another circle around our swan let's right click and invert mask and then let's bring the exposure up a little bit we can actually brighten our swan while also darkening the rest of the photo. So it's a really powerful thing. You can see here, that swan is very, very much now at the focal point of the photo. Now you may have noticed that the mask is pretty obvious on the actual photo. You know, it's an obviously affected area. There's a couple of things we can do about that. One of them I've actually already done. So we can right click on the layer, we can click feather mask. Normally this would be a zero, but I've already feathered it up to 100. We can do that on both masks just to make sure that it's nice and feathered. That means we're getting much softer edges, but even so you can see it's still a little bit obvious in the photo. The other thing we can do, and this is what I really like about Capture One, is we can play around with the opacity of these layers. Now it'd be helpful if we're naming these layers so we could, we could name them so we know exactly what we're talking about, but let's start with the darken layer. Let's bring the opacity down. And then let's do the same on the layer where we've lightened around the swan. Let's bring that down to about 70 as well. Now that is a much more subtle look that we've got there just by playing around the opacity. And what I love about that in Capture One is that we can, we can go back, we can change that without having to fiddle with all of the values that we might have changed. Because we, we've done exposure and brightness, but we might have done all kinds of different things. So it's great to be able to, to actually use the, the actual opacity in that way. So let's have a look at, at turning these off. So let's turn off both of those layers and then turn them back on. That has made a massive difference to the photo. Immediately, the swan is the focal point of the whole photo now, the brightest area, which is really, really good. So let's talk about another thing that we can do. So let's add another adjustment layer. So we're gonna go new empty adjustment layer, and let's come over here to this draw linear gradient mask. Now, this allows us to draw on a mask. So a little bit like this, we can just left click and drag. Let's press M so we can see that. And you can see where the red is, is, is the mask, and you can see it feathers really nicely. Now we can control the feather by just moving these lines. We can make it a much harder edge, 
we can make it a much softer edge. Let's press M to turn that off again. And then we could do things like bring in some brightness from the right to kind of simulate the light coming in from that side or, or just emphasize it a little bit. We could do things like up the exposure on that side as well if we wanted to, just to make it look much more like sort of sunlight coming in from the right there. And immediately, immediately that has made a big difference to the photo. Now we've got this light coming in from the right. But let's go over to a different photo. I'm gonna show you something else that we can do with these masks. So this photo here I've got, it's just it's already edited as well. So it's a, it's a pre-edited photo. But let's go and, and actually adjust some things here based on a luminosity value. So we're gonna adjust brightness and, and things like that based on the brighter and the darker parts of our image. So let's start off here by left clicking and holding on the plus, new empty adjustment layer. Let's use a linear gradient mask and let's drag that in from where the sun is there. Let's press M. Let's just drag that out so we've got it kind of across the sea. And what I want to do is actually bring the exposure up a tiny bit, the brightness up as well, and I'm going to bring the clarity up. But I only want this to affect certain parts of the image. So I'm going to come up here just above where the layers are. We can click Luma Range. This is going to allow us to affect where our mask is on the photo based on the luminosity values within the photos. Let's press M so we can see where our mask is. Let's actually cancel this and then press M. There we go. Now let's click Luma Range. Uh, we can also actually click Display Mask right here, so I didn't need to close that at all, but here we are. Let's drag these sliders up and down. So you can see at the moment, it's affecting all of the image based on the luminosity, but we can change that. So as we drag the darker points up, it's now not going to be affected. You can see the red is disappearing from the darker areas. It's not going to be affecting the darker parts of the image and I can kind of soften that transition, if you like, between the light and the dark by, by just dragging this out so you can see how it's affecting different areas based on luminosity. So we've got the, the, the kind of main areas that's affecting and then it, it kind of feathers off, it falls off as we drag this out as well. You can see the change when you've got the mask displaying there, you can see the change there yourself. Let's click apply and let's click M again. Now, this has made a massive difference to the actual C there, first of all. So let's turn that off and turn that back on. But it's also made quite a big difference to the sky. So instead of using a linear gradient mask in this situation, let's press the minus key to get rid of that, plus new empty adjustment layer. Let's use the adjustment brush. So let's go here, bring that exposure up a little bit again, brightness up and the clarity up. Let's press M so we can see our mask. And let's start painting on where we might want to have some of this happening. So I'm going to paint in the, the lighter areas that are affected by the sun from the sea. I'm going to paint in some of the other parts of the sea, most of the sea, if I'm honest, by the looks of it. But I don't want to grab the sky too much. I want this to mostly affect the sea. Now let's come up to Luma range. Let's pull this up again. So we're affecting the lighter parts. Let's just pull this down. And I think that looks really good. I think that's a good mask. Let's press M and look at that. Look at that C now. That's the brighter areas are now popping out. And then we can do a similar sort of thing, but in reverse. We can press and hold on the plus, new empty adjustment layer. But this time let's bring the exposure, the brightness and the black levels down put the shadows down a little bit as well. And let's paint in some of these areas. Press M to be able to see the mask. Just painting in some of these areas. Let's do down here, so that's a darker area. I really want to get this mostly on the sea, to be honest. I'm not so worried about the cliff. I think that's fine as it is. And then let's bring the Luma range up, but this time let's bring the highlights down. So it's only affecting the darker areas of our photo. And we can really bring this down, I think, till we've got, you can see we've got the mask in the darker area of the waves around the main bit of the photo, and then down in the bottom left, it's gonna be really falling off into darkness. Let's hit apply and M to get rid of that mask. And look at the, look at the contrast and the kind of, how much that's popping now on the sea. Let's turn this off, turn both of those layers off. Look how flat that looks now 
without us doing that. And that's a really, really useful way to control your masks because let's say you're doing a skyline where you want to paint in the sky. You can use the auto mask, of course, to actually paint that in and avoid the buildings. But sometimes it's easier to actually use the luma range to make sure you're only affecting the brighter part of the image, which in that case is going to be the sky. There's a super useful tool to have when you're editing like this. And there we go. That's a little bit more of an advanced way of using the masks within Capture One. They are incredibly powerful when you use them in conjunction with each other. You can use them with color, exposure. We've mostly been doing exposure stuff here, but you can do things like adjust the hue of different colors, but only masking certain areas of the photo. You can do things like adjust white balance, but in certain areas. You know, in some areas, I like to add some warm tones and then cooler tones elsewhere. It can make a big, big difference to your photo, and you can end up with a very, very nicely edited photo using these masks. Now, if you have any questions about anything you've seen in the video, pop it down in the comments below. We'll get back to you ASAP. Of course, if you have any suggestions, we've had some great suggestions already for future tutorials, especially in Capture One, but anything else you want to see as well, pop it down in the comments because I'm always open for suggestions. I love to hear what you guys want to see as well, so that's really helpful. I will, of course, see you in the next video. Make sure to subscribe and like and all that fun stuff as well. Whew, almost forgot to say it. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.